can seat belts, airbags, or other safety devices in cars save lives? The answer is obvious. Thus, it is important for consumers to know that they get these options when they buy a car. But how can they know? They need to be able to rely on some kind of testing mechanism. My research is about testing mechanism, not in cars, but in statistical models. Although the type of research we do might not directly save lives, policy implications resulting from some statistical models can have huge implications on our lives. In a recent paper I co-authored, we found that published research receives significantly fewer citations if it uses an incorrect design, method, or statistical procedures. Thus, it seems that researcher value worked on correctly, though many don't apply these standards to their own research. A common method in the social science is called structural equation modeling. This method is very powerful because it can handle latent variables, variables that are not directly observable. Instead, one needs to use indicators of the latent variable. For example, a researcher studying how intelligence relates to leadership behavior would generally measure this construct via some test or questionnaires that are directly observable. But how can we know that the tested theory is any good? Karl Jöreskuk, the founder of this method, developed a test of model fit to test the plausibility of a theory model called the chi-square discrepancy statistic. How does this test work? Imagine you want to buy a car. You go online and choose a vehicle, including various options such as size, color, GPS, or other safety devices. A few weeks later, you receive the car. How do you know you got the car you ordered? Well, you need to inspect it and make sure that all the characteristics are fine. The chi square test is such a test. In a way, it compares if the card you order matches the characteristic of the car you received. Or said differently, is there a difference between what you got in practice to what you should have got in theory? The chi square test should reject about 5% of the correct model, which is called the type 1 error in statistic. The chi-square test does its job relatively well at large sample sizes, but is biased at small sample sizes. Suppose the sample size reflects the size of the car. The bigger the car is, the easier it is for the test to make sure that all options are in the car. If the car is very small, it's much harder for the test to ensure that all options are in the car. At small sample sizes, the chi-square test will be even more biased when the model is complex. That is, when it includes many variables, the more options, there is in the car, the harder it is for the test to ensure that all options are present. Okay? So to counter these issues, two alternatives have been developed. The first one referred to goodness of fit indexes, which are not tests. These indexes use certain rule of thumb to help a researcher decide if the tested theory is any good. One common index, the CFI, simply compare how much better the tested model is than the worst model. It's like comparing the car you received to the worst possible car. How helpful is this? The second alternative refers to correction to the chi square test, such as the one proposed by Swain, Bartlett, or Yuan and colleagues. These corrections work in the following way. They take into account how small the sample size is and how complex the model is, and rescale the chi square such, such that it behaves as expected. The chi square test will be adjusted so that it will only reject 5% of the correct models. To investigate which of the chi-square test, the correction to the chi-square test and the goodness of fit indexes um, are the best method to call a good model good and a bad model bad, we run Monte Carlo simulations. Monte Carlo simulations are a simple and powerful technique. Instead of collecting data, we generated our own artificial data, having known properties. In our case, we varied parameters that are known to make the chi-square test bias, that is, the sample size and the degree of model complexity. A great advantage of Monte Carlo simulation is that we are, in a sense, the car's producer. If we produce a car according to the bias order, a good test should not reject the car. The problem is that the model is rejected. What is here on the vertical axis should not be higher than 5%. A test that rejects more than 5% of the correct model has a type 1 error that is too high, and this is not desirable. Contrarily, if we produce a car that differs from the bias order, a good test should raise the flag and say, hey, the car is no good. The ability of a test to catch an incorrect model is called power in statistics. 
and to be considered as powerful, a test should reject at least 80% of the incorrect models. So, to summarize, a good test should have both good type 1 error as well as good power, and this at all sample sizes. So here are our results. Note that each dot represents the probability that the model is rejected, depending on two variables. On the horizontal axis, the number of, of observations, the sample size, and the different line colors represent different degrees of model complexity. So as expected, the chi-square test is biased at small sample sizes and when the model is complex. Also, the chi-square test will lack power to reject incorrect models at small sample sizes and when models are simple. Goodness of fit indexes are even more limited. The CFI has a type 1 error that is way too high at small sample sizes and when models are complex, but also the CFI lacks power to detect incorrect model, and this even at large sample sizes. Another index, the root mean square error of approximation, is also very limited. His type 1 error is way too high at small sample sizes, but also when models are simple. His power to reject incorrect model will also be very limited when models are complex. Using the corrections to the chi-square test to detect a correct model works very well. The type 1 error is at 5%, where it should be. However, the power to detect an incorrect model is somehow too low at small sample sizes. And to correct for this, we used another test in combinations to the correction, a targeted Lagrange multiplier test. It tests whether a specific part of the model is correct, as for example, the color of the car. Using the correction and the targeted Lagrange multiplier test, we are able to obtain good type 1 error as well as good sufficient power, and this even at very small sample sizes. Our results are very informative. On one hand, they imply that researchers should never use indexes to detect a good or a bad model. The current practice based on these indexes allows bad models to flourish in the research community and even to make their way into practice. Bad models cannot help policy, which is neither economical nor ethical. On the other hand, Using statistical tests and corrections are both useful and necessary. It will sometimes be painful for researchers to know that their model is no good, but only at this price can meaningful science flourish. To conclude, we are faced with two options. Either continue trading bad cars and use indexes, or use statistical tests and corrections at a higher price, but to the benefit of the social welfare of our community. As social scientists, which option are you going to choose? Thank you.